Good evening to all of the people of God. It is a beautiful evening on this Tuesday night, and we praise God for his keeping us yet another Tuesday. I want to thank the Lord for his goodness, for his kindness, for his mercy, for his grace. I want to thank the Lord for his faithfulness tonight. I'm so happy to greet you with the joy of the Lord because I know the joy of the Lord is our strength. Good evening to those of you who have signed on right at 7.30. And um, we are going to delve into the word of God. I hope you're having a great start to a new week. And I hope that things are as well with you as they can be right now. We are still in a pandemic, but um, also I'm glad to report God is still on the throne. I'm so glad about that. He supersedes any pandemic, and none of us have lived long enough to have gone through a pandemic before, but I thank God that he's keeping us during this time. And so we greet you with Jesus' joy, and we praise God for you. I um, want to thank all of you. Good evening, Deb. God bless you. want to thank all of you for your coming in, for your attendance, both on Sunday as well as on Tuesday night. I have, I have some faithful Tuesday night folks and uh, some faithful Sunday folks. We want to encourage you to please share these messages and these lessons uh, to be a blessing to people because many people, lots of people, God bless you, Tiana, uh, lots of people are, are going through a down time, meaning a depressed time, feeling, feeling down and, and depressed. And I was talking to my auntie just last night and she said, I'm so tired of being cooped up in the house, can't go anywhere, people can't come over. Um, I'm just tired of this and it, it, it just drains you. And I can understand that. And so uh, if you need to see a doctor, if you're, if you're, if you're depressed, if you're down, if you're uh, going, what is it, uh, uh, it got cabin fever, um, you might want to let your primary care physician know that you're having a difficult time because believe it or not next month will be one year that we have been in this in this pandemic and um, it's been difficult it's been very difficult and so if you feel yourself sad and melancholy um, I know that these Tuesday nights are called a scripture a day keeps depression at bay but that does not mean that these Bible study lessons take the place of uh, medical intervention, i.e. if you need uh, antidepressant medication. It's no different than if your blood pressure was elevated and you needed an antihypertensive, all right? And so, yes, the Word of God does, for me, keep depression at bay. But I can also say I have been uh, once upon a time on antidepressants and I'm pills and I'm not ashamed to say that. Uh, that's what they're for. I was going through a difficult time and um, I was on them for about three years and then, and then that time passed. And so I don't feel embarrassed. I don't feel ashamed. That is what medical intervention is for. All right, and so I feel no stigma um, uh, with that. And I encourage you, if you're having a difficult time, if you've noticed changes in yourself, I encourage you to contact your doctor and see your doctor because it is a challenging time. And next month in March will be one year. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you all for coming on and thank God for each one of you. Also, I want to say happy birthday to the February birthdays. Uh, don't want to forget that. It's not my birth month, but uh, it's many people's birth month. And so we know that 
Valentine's Day is coming up, actually Sunday. And I know a lot of people born on, on Valentine's Day. So happy birthday to all of the February birthdays. I want to look tonight, I don't think I'm going to get to the whole chapter, but I do want to look tonight to Psalm 27. Psalm 27. And um, Psalm, I, I tell you, uh, I, have, I have always really loved the Psalm. I've always loved the Psalms. Um, but my love for the Psalms grew uh, when I married my husband. God bless you, Deacon Lucille. When I married my husband, uh, because he too uh, is a lover of the psalm and he can preach he can get he can get stuff out of the psalms like nobody's business and um, him preaching from psalms so often has um, has made me take a new look and um, and really uh, a new have a new appreciation for for psalms and so we're looking at psalms 27 tonight and I'm going to try to do all seven verses I'm not going to try to do 14. I want to say this before I read it. Uh, in many of the Psalms, the Davidic Psalms, not all of the Psalms are written by David, but many are, many are. Uh, and it's so interesting because in those Psalms, those D Davidic Psalms, he often talks about his troubles, his enemies, uh, he, he often talks about the situation that he's in. And so I started thinking about David and, and, and I was thinking about how much enemies he must have had. He must have had an awful lot of enemies. Um, I can imagine that he did. Um, he, 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 was, he was loved by by many, but he was hated by many as well. And it's kind of like, um, like our lives. Um, there are people who just love us. And um, this may come as a surprise to, to the people that love me, but there are people that don't like me. <laughs> I don't get why, but there are people who don't like me. And, um, and I don't think I have as many quote unquote enemies as David had. I don't believe I do. I don't. Uh, but I know I can tell the people who, who do like me and the people who don't like me. And David's enemies were just as obvious to him. Now, some of the things that David uh, talks about in various and different psalms, he brought up on himself. What am I talking about? He made choices and he made, <laughs> thank you, D. He made choices and <laughs> don't y'all make me laugh. Joy talking about what? He made choices and got himself into situations whereby, good, good evening, April, good to see you, baby. Got himself into situations and predicaments, God bless you, Sister Reed, where he, he, uh, he, he just, there were some times where he just messed up. Have you ever just had to admit, oh, I messed up. I messed that all the way up. I mean, I messed that up royally. Well, there were times in David's life where he messed up royally. And he talks about that in some of, in some of the Psalms. Um, one of the popular times we know is the whole, the whole and I'm going to use the word debacle with uh, uh, Uriah and uh, Bathsheba. That was an epic, epic fail on David's part. But that wasn't the only one. There were others also. Um, but it seems to me that David had enemies, just like you and I, there were people that did not like him just on general principle. 
Good evening, Linda. And that and that's different than doing something to somebody and making an enemy. There are some people, God bless you, Pastor, God bless you, Pastor and Sister Hughley. There are some people, God bless you, Tamara, who uh just look at us and decide they don't like us. They just, they just, there's now I thankfully I really don't do that. I think that's very immature. I think that's very third grade-ish. Um, but there are still adults who look at people, look at us and decide uh, they don't like us for whatever reason. They don't like uh, the way we wear our hair or they don't like the perfume we have on or they, they don't think that purple looks good on us or whatever the case may be, whatever the case may be. Um, and I will imagine that there were people in David's day that just looked at him and decided that they they didn't like him just on general principle. They just didn't like it. They had heard that he was anointed by the king, uh, anointed to be the king, I'm sorry, uh, uh, by the prophet uh, Samuel. They had heard that he played music, beautiful music, and 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 they just decided that they didn't like him. And so in, in this 27th Psalm, uh, he brings up his enemies a couple of times. It's only 14 verses, but he, but he, kind, of, um, he kind of elaborates. He dedicates several verses to talking about his enemies. So let's look at it. I'm just going to read um, from 1 through 7 tonight. And then we will pick up from eight through 14 next week. I'm gonna try to get to all to all seven. He says, the Lord is my light, <clears throat> excuse me, and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and my foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me high up on a rock and now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Uh, I can go a little further. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear my cry, hear, O oh Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy upon me and answer me. All right, that's verses one through seven. And I want to I want to emphasize a few things and pull out a few things out of these first few verses. One of the things that I want to emphasize is that the relationship, oh, I'm calling this who the Lord is to me, who the Lord is to me. The relationship that you and I have with God is very personal. One of the things that I love about the Lord is he can have a relationship with millions of people and yet each relationship is tailored to that particular individual. Nobody but God could do something like that. 
nobody. It's not a one size fits all relationship. He deals with you and I based on the personality that he has given us. All right. I love that about God. We are very different. We're, we have similarities as, as human beings, I'm saying. We have similarities, but yet and still, we are different. We are unique in our own way. We have our own tone of voice. We have our own fingerprint. Iris uh, uh, is different in every single person. We are different in, in our own way. And even uh, many of you I have, I have shared, I have told you, uh, my mother is an identical twin. Um, and, and even though people could not tell them um, apart, um, they had very different personalities, very different. My, my auntie was more talkative uh, and my mother was more quiet. Um, but my auntie passed in 2008. And so, um, it's, it's interesting. I know another set of identical twins and the one passed and the other one is still living and, and the one still living kind of took on some of the personality characteristics of the other. And that's kind of how, uh, my mother has done. Uh, with my auntie. My auntie was a sweet, good evening, good evening. I hope you had a great birthday yesterday, Sister Gibson. Um, my, they both are sweethearts, but they just were different, are different. And, and, and God deals with you and I. He interacts with you and I in a different way. Um, uh, he's still God, but our relationships are intimate are personal, have their own, if you will, identity. That's the way God deals with his people in general. And so that's one of the wonderful things about the Lord and about having a personal relationship with him is it's not cookie cutter. You know, um, <clears throat> in subdivisions in, in, in Los Angeles, they call them track homes. They call them track homes. And in subdivisions, every third or fourth house is the same on the outside. You all have seen it. Every third or fourth house is exactly the same on the outside. The inside could have a different floor plan, but on the outside, it, it might have a different color. But, you know, every third or fourth house looks about the same. I'm glad. I'm glad it was. Every third or fourth house looks about the same. Well, every third or fourth saved person's relationship is not the same. Your relationship with the Lord is based upon the personality that he gave you. Because how many of you know the personalities that we have are God-given? And so I can use, she's on tonight. I can use her. I hope I'm not trying to embarrass her, but joy gets embarrassed really easily, really easily. I remember, um, what did I fall? I stumbled on a step at another church. I stumbled. I think I was coming down. It was like three steps and I stumbled and joy got embarrassed, but she gets embarrassed easily. I chuckled. I, I laughed. Now, I didn't fall all the way down, thank God, but I laughed. Um, I know she would have died if she would have been at B-Top when I stood up and my slip fell down. I know she, I mean, my skirt fell down. She would have just died. She would have just, we could have just had the service right then. Um, but I don't get embarrassed easily. That's just not my personality. <laughs> That's not my personality. Um, there are people who are very uh, passive and very low key. Well, I'm, I'm low key about some things, other things I'm not low key about. That's, it depends on what it is. 
Um, so we all have different personalities. We all, we all see things differently and God meets us exactly where we are. And I'm glad about that. He does not try to pull us up to where he is. He lets us grow over time and takes us through things and matures us through tribulation and through persecutions, all right? And so David here says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I would imagine that David has some enemies on his on his heels, if you will. And I was thinking about this word, this first verse, the Lord is my light. And I thought about how God gives you and I step light. The word of God says, thy word is a what? Lamp to my feet and a light to my path, all right? It's just step light. It's not next year's light, no. It's moment by moment light. It's situation by situation light, amen. Uh, God gives us information kind of like the military. I'm told, I'm not a veteran, but I'm told that the military, at least the Air Force at, uh, anyway, gives you information on a need to know basis. Well, that's kind of how God does, except for he does not give you all the information. Oh, okay. All right. He, 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 he shows you in part, we prophesy, in part he gives you a piece of it but not the whole enchilada all right because it will uh overwhelm us if we had the whole can you think back on some of the things that you have come through if god would have shown you from a to z what you would have come through you would have it would have been too much it would have been overwhelming i know for me for me it would have been overwhelming it really would have been but on the other side of it, I say, man, I didn't think I would be able to go through anything like that. In fact, I said I wouldn't deal with that. I said I wouldn't. Okay, I said what I would do if, and I ended up not doing it. And so he gives us step light. And so when David is saying here, the Lord is my light, I thought about a high beam flashlight. Not one of these little flashlights on your keychain, not the app on, on, on your phone uh, uh, that gives, it gives light, but it doesn't give a lot of light. I'm talking about one of these high powered flashlights. The Lord is my light and my salvation. He is my light and he is my savior. Amen. And so, and so I came up with a few, with a few alliterations, if you will. Uh, the Lord is my illumination for my vision. That's how we could say that. He is the illumination. He gives me step light, but he illuminates my way so that I can see some pitfalls, so that I can see some tricks, so that I can see some folks coming around the corner on me. Amen. So that I can see uh, and foresee, if you will. I can see some things before I get to them. Aren't you glad? Aren't you so glad about that? That you can see. You have some foresight sometimes. You can see the devil coming a mile away. That's because God shines a light and illuminates the way. It he See, light shows up darkness. Light casts out darkness. Amen. And the Bible says that in God, in the Lord, there is light and there's no darkness at all. There's no darkness in him. And so 
whenever, whenever he shines a light on our path and gives us insight and a light comes on in our mind, he is illuminating our vision. I'm glad about it. I'm glad about it. I'm glad about it. Better than better than bifocals and better than trifocals. He illuminates. I have a light on right now behind me. It's a small light to add to the light in the ceiling so that it's clear, so that uh, uh, there's no cast and no shadow because it's already dark outside. So I want enough light to light up this space, illuminate this space. Well, that's what God is to me. That's what he is to you. He shines a light in darkness. And I know, I know we sing the song, this little light of mine, uh, I'm going to let it shine. And uh, it's, it's, it's cute. It's nice. But really and truly, it's not a little light. <clears throat> it's a big light. It's a great light. It's a massive light. And when all of us get together, I tell you, uh, I, I went to, I went to, uh, I love going to concerts. And I went to um, Stevie Wonder concert. Um, it was one of the, in fact, it probably is the best concert I've ever been to. And I've been to a lot of concerts, but there was a point at which, God bless you, Terry. There was a point at which everybody took out their, their, their phones and were waving. Joy, you were there. You remember they were waving. They, they, they darkened. Well, the audience part was dark and it was at, um, it was at Kobo, I believe. I think it was, I don't know. It was downtown on the snowiest day that year, but we, but we made it. Anyway, they took out, they took out their, we all took out our phones and, 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 and turned on the flashlight and, and to see those phones with the lights waving. And it was almost enough light in there to read something because most people did that. And I thought about that when I was when I was preparing for this and I thought about how God lights up our path. He makes it lighter where there is darkness. He shines a beam, a spotlight. You've seen uh, uh, new new uh, businesses opening and and the spotlight is going all across the sky. It's just, well, you could be 30, 40, 50 miles away from that business and that light, but you can still see it. You can still recognize, oh, that's a spotlight. The same is true with fireworks. You know how far up they are, and yet and still they give off so much light, and you and I down here can see it. Well, God, he is the one. The Lord is my light, and he's my savior. He is my salvation. He rescued me. He saved me, brought me up out of a horrible pit, set my feet on a street called straight, established my going. Okay, okay, I'm 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 not supposed to be preaching, I'm supposed to be teaching. I'm supposed to be teaching. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try. So he illuminates my vision where I don't see straight, where I don't see clearly. He brightens it. He open he gives me if you will an epiphany light comes on you ever had an experience where you were asking god and praying and almost out of nowhere the light came on you had an epiphany praise god thank you jesus you got the answer to your question you got the information that you needed to go some more. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Jesus is right. Hallelujah, Terry. That's right. That's right. He shines a light in darkness. He shines on us. You know, there, there was, um, <coughs> there was devotion in churches across America before the praise and worship movement. And um, 
One of the songs that I used to love to hear the deacons sing was Shine On Me. I don't know, I just love. Some, some of them went straight into let the light from the lighthouse. Others would say, I wonder if the light from the lighthouse will shine on me. Either way, I love to hear those deacons sing that song because that's what I know I need. I need light. This is a very dark world, people of God, and it's going to get darker and darker. It's going to get worse and worse. I wish to God the saints would stop expecting the world to be the church. The world ain't going to be the church. That's not happening. It's the church's responsibility to be the church. That's a come, uh, uh, well, I don't want to, do I need to get into this? I'm going to get into, I'm already out here. I might as well swim now. That's how come uh, uh, these evangelicals, the, particularly the white evangelicals, that's how come they're all besides themselves because they, 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 they come off as acting as though the political person in power uh, is going gonna, is gonna to be the savior. No, no. Politics and Christendom, religion are two separate things. They're two separate things. They're two separate things. I know, I know it was said, you know, that the previous president had God's mantle on him. He didn't. Okay, let me, let me, let me, let me get to my, I, I'm in Psalm 27. I can tell you he didn't. How do I know? Why do I say that? I know and I say that because nobody with God's mantle would take babies away from their parents, away from their mothers and put them in cages. Okay. Nobody, man, woman, or child, nobody with God's mantle would do that. Nobody. Okay, I'm 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 sorry. My time is going. Let me go. Let me go. Don't 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 egg me on. Don't don't egg me on. And 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 and. All right, let me get back. Okay, he illuminates. I got I got I gotta I gotta go. I gotta I gotta move. He illuminates uh, for my vision. He is the illumination for my vision. Uh, number two, he gives me. Verse two, he gives me individual vitality. The Lord is the what? Strength of my life. He's the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? He's the strength of my life. He gives me strength. He gives me the vitality, the stamina, the fortitude to be able to make it through the storm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, he <laughs> oh, Terry, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I always think about pastor and if Terry and I, uh, uh, come out of the same church in, in Los Angeles. We say Los Angeles, but it was really Inglewood First Church of God, the late, the late and the great. Nobody like him. Dr. Benjamin Franklin Reed, uh, Bishop Reed, I always still call him pastor, even though he had three earned doctorates, but um, he couldn't teach for love nor money. We would go to Wednesday night service and pastor would preach just like he did on on Sundays. He pastor had we had three services, eight, eleven, eight, eleven, and six, and he preached a different message at all three. Yeah, but on when and Wednesday night, and if we went out, he preached a different message. All right, all right. God, he is the strength of my life. Uh, of whom shall I be afraid? He gives us individual vitality. 
he gives us the strength to make it through. Not when things are going easy, but when things are difficult, when we are going uphill, when it's a rough terrain, he is our all wheel drive in an ice storm. All right, people back here or from back here know what I'm talking about when I say an ice storm. He's our all wheel drive in an ice storm. We have the strength, thank God, thank God, thank God. We have the strength to make it through turbulence, terrible times, difficult times. He is the strength of our entire life, individual, tailored specifically for you. He gives us individual vitality. He's the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? If God did not strengthen you and I, if God did not add strength on our account, you and I would have fainted a long time ago. Mm -hmm. That's a good place to say amen. We would have lost it a long time ago if God did not give us individual strength, pour into our spirits individual strength so that we could make another day's journey. Oh, yes. With all of the things, with all of the situations, with all of the issues that we face, the trouble that comes our way, the situations that befall us, it's nobody but God that gives us individual vitality so that we can make it. And then number three, number three, and that's going to take us to 815, number three he is my insulation from venom. From venom. He insulates you and I from the poison that was that is designed to kill us. Oh my God. Ooh. Now that I, I feel like running right now. Uh, uh, because there's been many traps set. There's been many foes. There's been people who have risen up against me, but God is my insulation from venom. The poison did not poison me. <laughs> oh, bless God's name. It did not poison me. What it was designed to do, it didn't do. Hallelujah. Not because of me. Not because I'm so great or so knowledgeable or even so wise. It's because he insulates me from the venom of the enemy. Oh, yes, he does. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo. He braces my fall. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. He helps me when I fall. He helps me when I, when I fumble and stumble make mistakes. He, God bless you, Alicia. He insulates me from the poison that the traps that are, he helps me sidestep some landmines. <laughs> Who bless the name of the Lord. He helps me to go around. He, 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 he keeps my, my foot from falling into the, into the mud of venom and into the trap of people. Oh, yes, he does. How do I know? I can go back to Isaiah and say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against me, thou shalt condemn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People form weapons all the time. They form them all the time. Sometimes they are so methodical and so calculated, but God insulates me from, oh my God, I wish you all could see it. I wish you could see it. He insulates you from the poison, from the venom that was spewed out. You know, I envisioned a venomous snake. I don't like two-faced people. I don't. I have no use for two-faced people. Uh-uh. No. None. 
none. People that smile in your face and, 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 and they don't wait till you fully turn around before they're stabbing you in the back. I have absolutely no use for them. I would rather you be an overt enemy than to be two-faced. I don't, I don't, I, if I suspect that you're two-faced, I don't deal with you. I don't. High and by, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it because uh, those people are more dangerous in many ways than an outright enemy. A two-faced person is more dangerous because uh, oftentimes you don't see them coming. <laughs> you don't see them coming and they stab you. They do something to you. They uh, uh, plot. They get in uh, good with you enough to know your vulnerabilities and your weaknesses. And then they take and use those weaknesses and vulnerabilities against you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even in my family, I don't deal with them, uh, Tamara. I don't. I'm a high and by. Mm -mm. I, can't, I, I can't. It's, it's something in my makeup. Uh, I call it out. I call it out. I really do. I call it out. Just today, just today, <laughs> Lord, y'all pray for me. Just today, uh, one of the ladies came in and um, they suck you in to know you, then twist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the ladies came in that I know uh, talks about me. And uh, I said, you, I said I was in another girl's office this co-worker's office. And I said, you want me to leave out so you can talk about me? And she started laughing. <laughs> and she said, no, Carm, why you say that? I said, because I know you talk about me, but it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah, so if I if I suspect that you're two-faced, I call it out. If, if, if I, I give you the time of day. But here's what I want to tell you. God insulates you and I. What does David say? He says, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came up on me to eat up my flesh, what happened? They stumbled and fell. Now he's saying, he's saying that the enemies and the wicked people are coming to attack him. And what happened was they stumbled and they fell. That's a come I know. God insulates you and I from venom. It might sting a little bit, but not like it was intended. No. See, because the wicked and our enemies, they intend to take us out. They, they, they intend to take us out. They intend to silence us. They intend to shut us down. But God prevents that. Oh, yes. But God insulates us from the venom, from the poison, from the detriment of our enemies. They stumble and fall. And oftentimes, the pit, the, 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 the hole, the pit that they dig for you and for me, oftentimes they fall in that one. They don't need to dig two because they fall in the one they dug for me. Mm -hmm. It backfires. I have seen it time and time again in my life, in my husband's life. I have seen it too many times. People rise up against us. It's been on jobs. They rise up against us and they end up losing their jobs. Something catastrophic happens. I hate to tell you that it has happened, not in the church I'm in right now, uh, but it has happened in the church someplace in the United States, not in first church either. It has happened some years back and some, it, God did not let it prosper. Hey, Lisa. Now, Lisa, Lord have mercy. Lisa uh, Hendricks Stovall, I have known since uh, eighth and ninth grade. 
that's how far back we go. And then we went to high school together. Lord, this, you talk about a singing soprano, baby. Whew, that Lisa Hendrix, she can put that soprano on. Oh my goodness. Uh, I love you. Thank you for tuning in. But God insulates us. He keeps us from the venom, from the snares, from the traps that are set for us. And I'm going to leave you when I tell you. You don't have to worry and you don't have to fear because the Lord, Psalm 27, is the strength of your life. The Lord is the light. He is the strength of your life. You, you and I don't have to be afraid. We don't have to fear because God's got us. God's got us. I'm going to cut it off there lest I hold you too long. Remember, stay safe. People of God, uh, if, you, if you can get the vaccine, uh, please get the vaccine. If, you know, if your doctor recommends it, uh, uh, get the vaccine. I think I, I got my first one. I get my second one. Um, I get my set Thursday, Thursday morning. Um, okay, Joy, you were doing pretty good till you said Sopranos are the best. Um, they are right. I think altos are the best cause that's my section, but, um, nevertheless, nevertheless, be that as it may, you know, Joy, you can make a mistake sometimes. Uh, I forgive you. It's all right. I forgive you. Um, but um, please stay safe. Please practice your social. Practice your. Thank you. God bless you, Terry. Practice your social distancing. We are still. We are still losing people to COVID nineteen. It's not over yet. So please. Please exercise wisdom. Use your hand sanitizer when you can't wash your hands. Use gloves. I'm still using gloves. Wear your mask. Don't wear it under your nose. That defeats the purpose. Okay, I, as a person at work, I have to keep telling, please pull your mask up over your nose. Would you pull your mask up over your nose, please? Please pull your mask. You know, you see everybody else in the building with their mask over their nose, and you think it's a good idea to wear yours under your nose. Okay, but nevertheless, nevertheless, make sure you follow the recommendations of the scientists, the CDC. I love you. Each one of you is so special to me, and thank you for tuning in. Share this message. Thank you. I love you. Share this lesson and we'll see you on Sunday at 11 o'clock. Pastor's going to be preaching and bringing a word from the Lord. God bless you. I love you. Thank you and good night.